Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you in church this morning. Just wanted to briefly tell you, uh, uh, apologize for the <laughs> chill that you feel in the air. Our furnace went down uh, through the night, but our contractor was faithful and he came and the heat is back on. So it'll be, it'll be warming up very shortly. Thank you for uh, you know, t staying through it. And maybe you can just turn to your neighbor and shake their hand and warm it up a little bit. Praise the Lord. God bless you. your presence is here Jesus we lift your name on high Lord God we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth God so we bring a sacrifice of praise right now Jesus to you Lord God hallelujah we thank you Jesus
my soul magnifies you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, and it's time to sing your song again, and whatever may pass, and whatever lies before me, and real every
Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence that we feel right now in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, how many are grateful this morning? Hallelujah for what God has done for you. Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful song service. And what a beautiful time of year to remember the greatest promise that was ever fulfilled by God to this world, that a Savior has come. And even the angels that night rejoiced with exceeding joy. The Bible says in the announcement, I bring you glad tidings of great joy. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What does that mean to me? It means this. It means now I have someone who came to rescue me. It means I have someone who came to help me, to, to forgive me of my sins, to carry them to the cross to cause me to be free forever, to cause me to gain eternal life. Now, if I blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed, blessed, blessed are those who serve Christ today. Amen. So I'm so happy this morning to be here. I'm glad that God came and saved us. Amen. How about you? Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Hey, go ahead and praise God. Give him a hand clap of praise. He's, he deserves it. Hallelujah. Praise God. He deserves all of the glory. Amen for what he has done for us. Turn to your neighbor and welcome them out this morning. If you're here and you're visiting, you're our most honored guest. Make yourself at home and just enter into the good things. You know, we live in a world of sorrows. We live in a world of trouble. But God said in the midst of all that, he is a present help. He is always there when we need him. And he will bring us joy and peace and love in the midst of everything that's happening around us. Amen. Praise God. Christmas time to me is a time of remembering what He did for us. Amen. Praise God. Before we're seated this morning, let's honor our great country one more time with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. God bless you. At uh, this time, we're going to wait on you for the offering. Amen. Hallelujah. And our helpers are going to come. And if you need an offering envelope, uh, raise your hand. Our helpers will see it and get you one to record your offering. We have Brother Mike Semino with us this morning. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. Ah. Uh. Can you believe we only have about a week and a half left to 2019? I have to say, though, it's been an incredible year. God has been faithful to us. And I truly believe that next year, 2020, God is going to do some miraculous things. He's counting on all of us to be a great part. And thank you for remembering the house of God. In these winter months, we have to dig a little deeper because the energy costs, the snow removal, things start to add up a little bit. So... I was thinking about that in prayer. I said, Lord, we just got to dig some deeper in 2020. I just want to talk about a minute about an incredible gift that God gave us, especially being just a few days away from Christmas. God so loved us that he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Then Jesus himself gave his life on Calvary, which in turn gave us the gift 
of eternal life, which is the most precious gift we could ever receive. Why do I have such a passion to give my tithes and offerings to Jesus in this church? For it was this church, the leadership of the elders of this church, that kept the love of God and the standard of righteousness in this place, that I would have never known Jesus or received this great gift of eternal life. 34 years ago this month, I came to this church a young 26-year-old man filled with pride, selfishness. I thought the world and everyone in it owed me everything. I was what you call a receiver. But soon after Jesus came into my life, he removed the pride, the selfishness. He replaced it with love and compassion for others. And at that point, I told the Lord, I do not want to be just a church member. I want to build the kingdom of God. I want to put my hands to the work, and I want to finance his work. And I'll tell you, the reason why is it changes the destiny of so many people. We have a chance, an opportunity every time we give to change the destiny of someone's life. Today, as we put in our tithes and our offerings into the basket, let's just remember the greatest gift that you and I received, which was Jesus Christ and the gift of eternal life. And in turn, he is going to make sure that we have every single thing we have need of. He has always been there for me and my wife, always. The more I give, the more he gives back to me. The more I give, he comes back to me. It comes back to me in so many ways. And as I think about this week and the last couple months, my brothers and sisters that have gone home, that's my desire. I can't wait to reach heaven's shores and meet everyone that's there. <laughs> I promise, Pastor. I'm going to be here to support you, pray for you. Uh, I love you. I love this church. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are an incredible God who deserves incredible praise. Thank you so much for once a long time ago, you gave your son, your greatest treasure. You gave him to us, Lord, when I didn't deserve him. I surely didn't deserve it. But I thank you. As I thought about the greatest gift in all the years of Christmas that I've ever received, it was you 34 years ago when I came to this church. You gave me life, peace, joy everlasting. Thank you for putting in my heart to give to others and missions. I love missions. It's truly my heart. Thank you for the people that sits before me, those that are out at Facebook, that continually, faithfully give and support this outreach. This is the greatest, Lord. The kingdom of God will grow. It'll move on. But I'm so glad that you decided to stop here in Manchester, Connecticut and do a work, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. You're so deserving of it. In Jesus' name, bless your people abundantly. Strengthen them. Comfort them through this time, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they lay. On a cold winter's night that was so deep, no. the
sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no Let's just raise our hands and praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this offering this morning. Thank you for each and every giver, Lord, who has a heart to reach others and to help, Lord, to build your kingdom. Bless them abundantly through this time and into 2020. Let it be a remarkable year for each and every one. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just have a couple of quick announcements this morning. Uh, don't forget we have special services going on in the next week and a half. Uh, we have Tuesday, December 24th, is our Christmas Eve candlelight service at 8 a.m. Bring your families out to this beautiful service, remembering the true meaning of Christmas. And the doors open at 7.15 p.m. There will be no service on Wednesday, December 25th. Enjoy your Christmas with your families. And then on Sunday, December 29th, we will have a regular church service at 10 a.m. and at 7 p.m. So please come and support and attend. And then also, New Year is just around the corner. Celebrate the New Year together at our New Year's Eve service on Tuesday, December 31st at 7 p.m. Doors will open at 6.15, and there will be no service Wednesday, January 1st. Enjoy your New Year's Day. God bless you for our schedule. Amen. We have Sister Angie with us this morning. She's going to come and bring us some good reports. Amen. <laughs> good morning. Well, on behalf of WWLM, we want to once again thank everyone for whatever part you played in our 2019 Christmas on a Mission campaign. It's crazy. It came and flew, right? Well, for Christmas in Connecticut, we had a team go out shopping for the desired items for one school sponsorship. Within that sponsorship, it was seven families equaling 16 children. So what a blessing that was. A team wrapped the gifts and a team delivered to the school. Then, because we raised enough money, we were able to sponsor another school with enough gifts for 20 children. Yay! So thank you for helping with that. And we also received a phone call from a local biker group who held a toy collection and were looking for an organization to bless for the holidays. The total amount of brand new toys donated to WWLM was 3,689. <laughs> yes. I have to say it was actually kind of cool. I was on the phone with one um, with the group, and then Sister Adrian was on the phone with the school in need all at the same time. So it was just really cool how God just orchestrated it all. So with these over 3,000 toys, a team sorted, inventoried, and delivered to the Manchester Public School System. We blessed the entire Manchester district and a school in East Hartford. Yes. Isn't that awesome? So we've just been overwhelmed with that outpouring of love. It's been amazing. It's been just a beautiful atmosphere at the Blessing Center, just with things coming, with things going. It's just been absolutely beautiful. We all came together with that common cause, and it was to show the love of Jesus this holiday season. So we just want to th say thank you. We don't do it without you. This is a team effort, and uh, so we're just looking forward to 2020. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Yes, it's going to explode, so you better watch out. Uh, new church in Zambia. Believe in, it's going to happen. 2020. 
So just to end off with some answers to prayer, a lady has been seeing an improvement in her health after receiving prayer at the altar. After recent medical appointments, her doctors have taken her off one of her medications and reduced the others. She is believing God to continue the good work. Amen? Amen. A lady called back after a prayer with a good report. She had to go in for a colonoscopy because they found a mass or a tumor and they did a biopsy. But the results came in and she says, I'm praising God. It is negative. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. A lady called to the good report after, after prayer. A pastor has been moved out of ICU. She said, thank you for praying because when the prayers go up, the healing comes down. Amen. And the lady called in for prayer for her eyesight, and the Lord answered. She had, a, she had her vision checked, and she was told she had glaucoma. Called it in for prayer and went for a second opinion. She was told the pressure in her eyes is normal, and she doesn't need any medications. So she told the doctor, this is an answer to prayer. And he said, his office is on the top floor of our building. Amen. Amen. Let's give God the glory for changing lives. Amen. It's nice to know the boss at the top office, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, New, uh, New Life Choir is going to come, get ready to sing for us. Then Reverend Kolinsky is going to come and minister. God bless you. As they're coming, turn to your neighbor one more time and wish them a happy Christmas.
shake the sky Just like that Christmas night Let saints arise and welcome our King here Let voices shake the sky Just like that Christmas night Let saints arise should be the one before we preach. They're going to have to do a transformation, but this choir's not leaving here till they sing the Hallelujah Chorus.
about the hallelujah chorus that if you ever had to learn it you will never forget it in 1977 
I sang that song in high school at Manchester High School in the choir. And I still remember the bass part because I had such a low voice, that's where they put me. King of kings, Lord of lords. <laughs> you just can't forget it, can you? No, it's uh, just amazing. Um, I want to thank the church for just praying for so many families. And I want to encourage you this morning, you know, we're sending you out the ones that are connected to our church, but across the board right now, funeral homes are just filled. Uh, funeral homes that I'm working with are having two and three funerals a day. And I'd really like you to keep a family in prayer that I heard about last night. Um, the woman, 37 years old, um, has five children under five years old, just gave birth two months ago to a baby. And uh, they found her in her car um, at one of the malls, and she just passed away, and they don't know why. And so last night, a church gathered and families to um, have to say their goodbyes. There's hurts everywhere. Um, and so if you could just remember everyone in prayer. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, on the holidays, it just it becomes overwhelming for losses. But that's because the holidays bring us together as families and I just really want to encourage everyone. Um, I know I always use my sister because um, there was a greater hurt there than any other death that I had ever experienced. And I knew that I couldn't let those around me down that still needed me, but I knew I couldn't go through the same process and so I'm just going to encourage you if you're in that type of a battle. Um, I heard someone say, my Christmas is gone. Your Christmas is not gone. Your Christmas is what's going to hold you. The economical part of Christmas, that may be gone. But what Christmas really stands for is still here. And you're not alone. And there are people around you don't make your grief your number one priority. Make that that is around you your number one priority, and it will take care of that number one hurt. Okay? I'm not going to tell you to pretend it's not there. It is. I'm not going to tell you to act like everything is okay when it's not. It is. You may break down and cry, but if you can remember the memories of that person, it won't be long until they will have you in full out stitches. And then we have to be careful because our grief sometimes will say, you shouldn't be laughing. Yes, you should, because we still have to go on. I did not lose my Christ. Um, this morning, I cannot even begin and I will not try to tell you what this body is going through. But I do know one thing. It does not change who my God is. I'm grateful for our worship singers this morning that helped us to get into the holies of holies. That's where our strength is restored. That's where virtue comes from God. And he said, when you're in the midst of the battles, you sacrifice that praise. And, you know, I looked around this morning and I seen some people that are in the depths of despair. You meet me after church and I'm going to pile on you what I'm carrying. And then maybe you'll be willing to get rid of what you have, that one little thing of pettiness that is on your shoulders. Because right now this whole body of Christ needs you. There are families everywhere that needs the body of Christ to step up today and to take a stand and hold forth for what you need. His virtue is everything, and it will bring us through. I'm going to have Christmas this year, 
Anyone who has Christmas with me, I have three of them. They will all be different. But I am determined that I am not going to give up what Christmas really came to do. And that was peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Hallelujah. Yes, we're sad. But I'm not sad about Jesus. And I got news for you. They're not either. If they were, they would have come back. <laughs> and they didn't. <laughs> but they are waiting for us to come. I know I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell this. I won't say the names, but I will say one name because that doesn't matter. But as I stood over someone's casket in this last three weeks, I said to them, when you get to heaven, if this is even possible, because I don't know if it is, I know like we have our perspectives of heaven and sometimes I think it just helps this natural man to feel better, to be honest. But I said to them, could you please, when you get there, because I'm just so excited about what is happening in worldwide and the lives that are being changed and where that ministry is going. So I said, when, when you find Reverend Ingman, could you just take a minute and sit down with her and just tell her what is happening in World Ride right now and that her vision and her dream, it's going on. And I, I don't know, the Bible says that they still receive rewards. So I don't know if there's a board up there that says, okay, today Reverend Ingman got one. I, I don't know. I, I doubt it, but... My mental brain wants to think, like when you go to the airport, yep, we're on time to, oh, we're delayed. I just think there, maybe there's a board up there that says, hey, you got another reward today, Reverend Ingman. Here's another, you know, jewel for your crown. I don't know. And then I said to him, and you may run into someone else. That name I'm not telling you. I said, and they're going to want to know all of the gossip of FGIC. So... Could you just tell them all the good gossip and leave all of the rest out? <laughs> That's how I deal with it because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. It's our strength. I know they made it home, but they did like to know everything that was going on. And that's okay. I guess some of you didn't like my humor. Any <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just happy I can laugh. Hallelujah. And I thank you for your prayers for me because I would not be standing here this morning without them. It takes a body to make a body function, doesn't it? So thank you for keeping my head going. I uh, have been forgetting a few things, but God is helping me remember what I need to remember. And so uh, thank you so much for helping carry us. So as you know, um, if you're a member here, we have a funeral here this evening, and so if you could just help our cleaners this morning um, when service is out, first of all, if you wouldn't mind jumping in and helping them, that will allow them to um, be able to leave sooner. But if you could check around your area, please make sure whatever you brought goes out with you. Make sure your chairs are pushed up. If you've got things on the floor, please pick it up around you, and that will help us to get the church done as soon as we possibly can. And again, if you can stay and help our cleaners, uh, we have to do a full cleaning of the whole entire church to be ready for tonight. And tonight, um, the wake will start at 5 o'clock and um, go until 6 and uh, we will have a beautiful memorial service for Brother Rick Burrell. Um, this one, um, when I looked at the pictures, um, reality hit me. Um, this, this was my teenage generation. This was the generation when I was 11, 12, and 13 that God saved these wonderful, hurting, lost people. 
Many times when I go to a funeral, I look at the pictures and I only remember the latter parts, but as I looked at this family's pictures, I grew up with this family. I babysat their children. Um, I was not in any ministries then. They were my ministry leaders. They were the people that I looked up to. They were the elders that uh, fought for me. And um, so unfortunately, this strikes home a new generation for me of um, people that I watched God change their lives and I watched God restore and I watched their families grow. And uh, so this, this one strikes a little different vein for me. But one of the things that I am so grateful for is God's grace. And I'm grateful that God came. He came to this world to bring us hope. And I have a hope today. And um, I know that Rick Burl, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, made it home because God says, I look on the intent of the heart. And by golly, that man's heart loved God. And so many times I would hit Reverend Mancini and say, look back there at Brother Rick. He was the only, I, I was going to share this tonight in my message and probably still will, but he's the only person that when I looked through the congregation at people praising God, he would praise God with such a peace that he looked like he was actually sleeping, standing up with his hands raised. Isn't that true? I mean, he would just like go into total peace rax relaxation mode um, when he praised God. He was just like amazing to look at. He loved God with his whole entire being and was so grateful for the mercy of God. So no... That was not the news I wanted to hear. However, heaven took to praising God, shouting, rejoicing, and a heavenly father waited for his son to come home. And um, we're going to get there. Um, if Brother Mike goes this week, I told him he has to come by my house and pick me up on the way. <laughs> so... Don't forget, Mike. Uh, you just never know. And uh, we live in a day where I'm learning as I get older. You can't make promises. But one thing you can do is you can live every single day giving out every piece of mercy, virtue, goodness, gladness, love, happiness that you possibly can give to someone so that if you do go, you have no regrets. I often talk to families about what they have done, that they will have no regrets, but I don't want to have any regrets when I get to heaven and say, I wish, I want to get there and just know I did my best that day. And uh, so maybe change some things around instead of, um, I knew this year, I will share some personal things with you, um, I knew this year in our home for my husband's side of the family, there was no way that I could set my dining room table and put on a meal. So I thought about it. Um, so we're going to do appetizers. And my husband and I have found the most silliest things in the world that you could ever do. Um, they're the kind of things that you look at and go, oh my goodness, you have got to be kidding me that you want me to do this. But they're the thing that once you get started, you laugh until you pee your pants. And that's what I want. Not pee my pants, but... <laughs> that I don't want to do. <laughs> but I do want to laugh until I almost do. <laughs> That's why we're going to do it down in the basement. That's the closest bathroom around. But you understand what I'm saying? And I give you that because sometimes the regular things we do just become too much to do. But still get together. 
maybe change some things around. And then when you get into the midst of that joyful place, just look up and say, oh my goodness, you would have had a blast if you're here, but I think you're having a blast where you are, and it's okay, all right? And I am believing God for a wonderful Christmas for our home. I just, just have to change things up, okay? And you may have to as well. I also encourage people to bring something along if it helps them that belong to someone uh, that you really, really loved and make it a part of what you do. My sister, this Thanksgiving, I was just really, really missing her. And so um, she would always come and help me cook. And she would make this turnip and carrot dish that I just absolutely loved. But she was famous for her vegetable cutting. And so she would come and I would make the whole entire meal while Marie would sit at this little table and talk to me and taste everything I made and cut one dish for six hours. It didn't matter how long she was contented to do that. And she would take a whole turnip and a whole bag of carrots and cut them all up and every size was the same. Now, when I make it, I always say, sorry, Marie, they are squares. I know this one's bigger and that one's smaller. I don't care. At least I'm making it, okay? Nope. Ben, am I telling the truth? Yeah, I mean, it was ridiculously perfect. I was watching Chopped one time, and um, they were commenting on this person's skill of vegetables. And I said to them, you have not seen anything till you've seen Marie. However, she would have never won because she would have never got the dish done. <laughs> but I wanted that back. And so every once in a while when I just get missing her a lot, carrots and turnips will show up on the table. Find something that brings you peace. And my first bite, I always say, this is for you, Marie. So don't try to forget it. Don't try to push it away. Just find a way to grieve and be happy that someone left us a memory. Okay? It's one thing I'm happy. I know it makes me cry sometimes, but I'm happy death did not take my memories away. I still have them. I still know who they are, and I still can pass them on. So I just wanted to spend a little time with you this morning as a church to strengthen you and to build you up, and please come out tonight and just strengthen and build up the Burl family. They really need you at this time. They're doing good. Yep, you're going to see them cry. They're supposed to. Tears are a language God understands. It's what happens. I remember David Hamlet coming the morning of his sister's funeral, and he said, Pastor, Mama is not doing good this morning at all. And I looked at him, and I shocked him, and I said, Good, I'm glad. And I said, Because yesterday she was doing too good. I'm glad she finally broke. It's okay to cry. It's not okay to cry, though, when you don't stop for days on end. Then that's a different situation, but there's, you got to get it out or your heart becomes too heavy. Okay? It's okay. So reach out and touch somebody, someone. Reach out. Touch them. Because I'm here for you. We're a team. Teamwork gets the job done, doesn't it? And I look around and I just think about so many people that are attached to this day. We're going to get through it as a church. We're, aren't we? We're going to make it through. Hallelujah. So God bless you this morning as Reverend Klinsky comes and shares. And I thank him for 
getting a message together because I didn't feel strong enough to do both today, although I just preached you one, so I might as well have, right? <laughs> I forget that when I get to the house of God, I'm going to get that zip, and, um, but I will need a nap this afternoon. Hopefully, I will get one. But we're going to get you out early because he's preaching. <laughs> if you didn't see our kids in the house of God this morning, um, because of having to cancel tonight, this is their uh, Mission Can Redemption Night. And so they've been over there working. Uh, one person this week brought in 15 bags of bottles along with what we already had piled up over there. So I don't know if any of you seen Adrian give me a thumbs up, and she said, we're almost done, Pastor. And so they have to get taken in uh, before January 1st, so we're on our way. And the young people, I, I went over there, and it was so quiet. And I was like, wow, you guys are quiet in the morning, but you are not at night. And they're like, and so Gio... He steps back and he looks at me and he goes, it's morning, Pastor. We haven't woke up yet. <laughs> Don't you just love Gio? Oh, my goodness. He's just the cutest boy ever. But they were so diligently working over there. And they love, they love their mission project. They just, they just love knowing that seven empty bottles will give somebody a full meal, 35 cents. Just amazing, isn't it? So God bless you this morning. Your kids will join you eventually. Hallelujah. You Reverend, ready, Reverend Kalinsky? Hallelujah. I have my own. Praise the Lord, everybody. Laughter, the Bible says, doeth good as a medicine. It shakes us out of ourselves. And, uh, well, I know my wife was uh, sitting about it thinking there not to put a feather in my cap, but uh, she was working late, and uh, she was working later. And so I said, look, I said, we had some pork tenderloins wrapped in bacon. If you never had them, they're absolutely, yes, I'm going to bring it up. <clears throat> And so she goes ahead and, uh, and I cooked them and added a cauliflower souffle and uh, oh, sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Thanks to Trader Joe's men, that's the place to go. Trader Joe's will bail us out. Brother Nick, those meatballs, see the hand up, honey? He, <laughs> those meatballs were great. So uh, anyway, we had a four bean casserole and she came home and ate it. Well, we joked about that because it's been a, a long couple of weeks. And uh, so she'd go ahead and we took a little drive. and said, honey, you know why we're having such a great night? I says, thank you, thank you. So we'd go along, she'd be in the store. I said, you know why we're gonna have a great time in this store? <laughs> But laughter, we've laughed more about that. <laughs> I was getting something in the kitchen. She said, you know why it's great? I said, why? She said, <laughs> amen, amen. You have to get rid of self sometimes, many times, all right, all the time, and have a good time and enjoy your day. Because I've often said, if you don't have a good day, it's nobody's fault but yours. So praise the Lord, he gave us joy. I want to talk to us for a little while on God made a way. Tell your neighbor God made a way. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, and God, we ask you, Lord, you've already preached this message in so many ways this morning because there's one spirit in your house. God, let the simplicity of your word reach the hearts refresh our hearts, enlighten those who don't know you, God, and they'll come to know you before this morning's over, and we'll praise you for it and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. My wife's still here. I was going to say, you know why we're going to have a great meeting? 
because I cooked dinner for her the other night. God made a way. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 says this, And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That is Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. He shall save his people from their sins. Jesus, the Hebrew word Yeshua or Joshua, meaning Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. Tell your neighbor, Yahweh is salvation. The Life in the Spirit Study Bible in its footnote says this. It describes the future task of Mary's son and it is the initial promise of the gospel that Jesus as Savior shall save his people from their sins. Has anybody in the house experienced the forgiveness of sins? Can you say amen? amen. He shall save his people from their sins. Sin is the greatest enemy of the human race, destroying one's life and eventually one's soul. God seen our plight, our predicament, if you will, and so he came himself to do something about it. Can you say amen? He sent to us a savior. He didn't have to do it, but he sent to us a savior. Luke chapter 2, I marked it, I believe, over here. Somewhere over. Luke chapter 2, we've heard the story many times. I want to read this verse of scripture. We sang about it this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 says this here. I'm not, this is more of a study Bible, so I don't normally preach out of it. All right, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, Reverend Mancini, I bring you good joy, amen, or rather I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. Matthew 1, and 23 says this, Now all this was done, all of it, about Joseph and the angel appearing to him and telling him not to be afraid to take Mary to be his wife, that it was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Yahweh is salvation, somebody. God with us. Think about it. Almighty God came down in sinful form of flesh, took on flesh to identify with us so that he could give us a way out. So if you feel like you can't make it today, you can make it because Jesus was our greatest example. Hello, somebody. You can make it. That's why we're here many years later because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That scripture fulfills Isaiah 7 and 14. And God shall give us a sign and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Think about it. If God can fulfill a promise a few hundred years ago and bring it to pass, what are you facing today that you're looking for God to do in your life? Don't tell Hetabasiah. Don't tell me God can't fix it. If he can bring a promise a few hundred years ago to pass, he can fix your situation if we just trust in him. Give him a wave offering this morning, brethren. If we trust him, he came to save us from our sins. 1 John 3 and 8 says this, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifested or revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil. So that's telling you and I that sin came because of the devil. He sinned in the beginning, in the beginning. then he came here and he duped Adam and Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. It was him that brought sin over here. For this very purpose, God seeing our plight that we couldn't get out of sin, he did something about it. Oh, glory to God. He came to destroy the works of the devil, but he said he might be able to destroy the works. Why is there a might there? Because it's left to a choice. God doesn't want robots. He wants us to freely choose him. It's left to a choice. When you go over and read in Isaiah 14 what happened to Satan over there, just a few things over there, it talks about how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I also will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What's it talking about? It was all wrapped up in self. So when sin came, it's all about me, my, and I. It's all about self. The greatest sin wrapped up in self. And God came to show us a way out. Think about it. That's why we go the way we go before Christ, those of us that knew him. We come so far, we come to the end of the road and we don't know what to do. So finally, we find the mercy of God. We get humbled enough inside of ourselves to say, God, I need you. And when we do that, the grace of God comes every single time on the scene and will transform every life. Oh, glory to God. I'm here 38 years later because of the transforming power of God. I couldn't change. My dad would say I didn't believe. He'd give me 30 days and six months would go by. I'll give you another 30 days. Amen. Time would go by. I see, He said, I don't believe you changed. I said, I didn't do it on my own. And neither did you. God came. There's a choice to walk with God or to stay in sin. It's a choice. That's why Jesus said that I might destroy the works of the devil. You must choose to walk with God and refuse the life of sin. You can't get away from it on your own. That's why God came down to do something about it. You're struggling in life. Amen. You don't have Christ in your life. He's showing you today you can have a way out of your situation. Your entire life can change this day if you lay it all at his feet. Glory to God. One man, supposedly he claimed to be a Christian many years ago. He's older now, might even be gone. Amen. Had degrees in life, had a wife, had few children, but was still in depression and anxiety. He was making a confession, but he never surrendered his all. When he came to that realization and he laid his life at the foot of the cross, new life. (laughs) Glory to God. Glory to God, Reverend Bosco. Can you go back down memory lane when your life was tormented and you came to the cross and God came inside and took the torment away? When we give it all to him and we stop trying to orchestrate our lives and we let God orchestrate our lives for us, we'll find new life in Christ. Oh, give him a praise offering this morning. Hallelujah. But for the grace of God, we're saved this morning. There's a choice. Serve God. Or serve the devil. When I first heard that, I'm not serving the devil. Then I came to the realization through the word of God, if you're serving self, you are serving the devil. Wrapped up in self. Look it up when you go home. Genesis 3, 1 through 13. Eve had a choice. But she let the serpent beguile her, or in other words, trick her or deceive her. She made the wrong choice. 
She didn't have to. She said, the serpent beguiled me, but she gave in to it. Always a choice. Nobody makes you sin. It's your choice. Make the right choice. Been involved with prison ministry over 30 years. Some people you never see. Others you see three and four times. What's that tell me? It tells me they haven't made the right choice. You don't have to stay in your situation. Eve should have held on to the word of God. Oh, I know we say we're human, but if we stay in the word of God, if we stay in prayer, if we stay faithful to come to God's house, if we don't pick and choose what service we're going to come to because your flesh doesn't want to go there. It's too cold outside. It's too hot outside. I'm too tired. I work too long. Put it all under the blood and go to the house of God anyway. And you'll find something to shout about or praise God about or rejoice about or just rest in his peace. So much the more. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves as you see the manner of some are. We need the house of God. We need godly fellowship. And if we do these things, you will not fall. It's when we get by ourselves. Oh, the enemy loves to get us by ourselves, but then he speaks into our ear. Nobody cares, and it goes on and on and on and on. But when you come to the house of God, you get refreshed. I get refreshed. Someone has a song. Someone has a smile. Someone has a praise. Some, come on, somebody. Somebody's walking around praising God. I was preaching in Rhode Island a week ago. I said, the sister in the back is just flailing her arms back there. Having, they start laughing. I said, but look, she's got something to shout and dance about. And that's the difference. It shakes us out of our self. You'll never walk with God in yourself. Neither will I. I need you. You need me. Look at your neighbor and smile and say, whether you like it or not, you need me. And I need you. We must realize there is a spiritual warfare going on over the souls of humanity. If you look at Ephesians 6, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. There is a warfare after your soul. And you must realize that. I must realize that. It must stay fresh in my mind that I have got to run this race till one day I reach the goal. Nobody can do it for me. He's made a way. Oh, glory to God. He's made a way. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, if this gospel is hid, remember, it was the first initial appearance of the gospel when Christ was born. If this gospel is hid, it says it's hid to them who are lost and whom the God of this fleshly world hath blinded the minds of, lest they see the light of the glorious gospel. But God came to reveal himself to us. This shall be a sign unto you. They were looking for a great warrior. He didn't come that way. No, no, no. It's always in a way of humility. We must choose whether we'll serve God or we're not going to. We must choose to walk with God, live by his word, or stay living for self. But self is not going to deliver you. Reading this scripture over here in Luke 13, let me turn here. I thought I marked it. Go with me to Luke 13, amen, chapter, verse 23. 23 and 24. Different when you use a different Bible. Here we go. Luke 13, all right. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there a few that be saved? And he said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. Why? Because they have to humble themselves. Lucifer could have stayed in heaven. Hello, somebody. He didn't have to fall. It's a choice. It's a choice. He made the wrong choice. Choices come every day. We must choose every day to make the right choice. And if we should stumble, then turn around and make the right choice. Tell your neighbor, if you drop the ball, pick it up and keep on running. Testify to him. 
Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Oh my, aren't you glad we have a choice today to walk with Almighty God and to choose Him? Aren't you glad He came and delivered you from the plight that you were in earlier in your life? Aren't you glad you can still go to Him every day with any problem that crops up along the way and He'll make a way out for us? Romans 8.34 says this here, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen, risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that's what we have to focus on, not the situations that arise. Look it, trials are going to come, tests will come, situations will come, life happens. It simply happens. It's going to come. What's going to separate you from the love of God? Are we going to get angry because everything didn't go our way? Remember, you're bought with a price, your life is not your own. So why don't you just take the situation, say, here, Lord, here it is. You work it out. You take care of it. I'm going to trust you to orchestrate my life. And that's the test. Will we let God have the reins to orchestrate your life? You can go to church till the cows come home and never surrender your all until you give it all to him till you let go of the baggage, till you let go of every evil thing the devil may be speaking in your ear and laid at the foot of the cross. I'm going to walk with God. Listen, when you know somebody has the answer, you don't have to mold it over. You don't have to reason with it. You just give it to God and let him do it. Then you'll turn around and realize however long it takes that he worked it out. And then you'll come back to the house of God and you'll shout and cry and praise God, whatever you do, and give him the glory because only God could have done it. Can I get a witness today? Only God could have done it. You can't do it. You said, I'm trying to work it out. That's your problem. Let me give you some counsel. Stop trying and start surrendering. Start surrendering. But, but, no but. There's no buts. There's no justifying yourself. Surrender. I, I, I don't, but God, no, there's no buts to it. There's, there's no rationalization with it. He said, oh my. He said, listen. What's that scripture in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Lean not upon all. So it is in the word. In all thy ways and oh my. Surrender. It comes in the surrendering. Anybody that walked with God any length of time knows there's a time you just let it all go and say, God, I can't do this. And he says, I know. I know. So if you give it to me, I'll work it out for you. In the surrender. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior. To do what? To save us from ourselves. I'm almost done here. I want to read this here in my footnotes here about we're more than conquerors. You ready for this? The entire phrase, we are more than conquerors, is one word in the Greek. Now, it's a long one here. I'm probably going to butcher it. But it's called Hooper Nicomen. We won't have a test on that later. The entire New Testament, this compound word occurs only here. Hooper means over and above. 
or in the Latin it means super, over and above or super. Nicomen means to conquer, meaning victors, conquerors. Listen to me, church. Thus, Paul is literally saying that instead of believers being victims of your circumstances in a fallen world, in Christ, in Christ, mind you, we are over and above victors. We are super victors, if you will. Instead of barely getting by, amen, glory to God, in life's difficult experiences, in and through Christ, we are overwhelmingly conquerors. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor we're overwhelmingly conquerors. Jesus gained the decisive victory for us at the cross. Satan has no more hold. Sin has no more dominion over you and I. He came and put an end to him because of his victory and the power of the Holy Spirit within us. We are empowered to be more than conquerors in the struggles of of day-to-day -day life. Oh, glory to God. Glory! Glory! We are more than conquerors, overwhelmingly victorious, not to serve the problem, but to recognize who's over it all. He'll work it out. If you need finances, he'll bring it your way. If you're looking for a child, he'll bless you in due time. Whatever seems impossible, he's the God of impossibilities. If you got addiction, he can break it today. Whatever you need God to do. A Savior was born to save us from our sins. John 10, while our ushers come and our musicians come, John 10, 27 through 28 says this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Oh, glory to God. Glory! Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You know what real Christmas is? It's having your sins forgiven and receiving the peace of God. When a life is surrendered to the Christ of Calvary, you will find new life. While the church is praying, is there one here today who says, Preacher, I need Jesus? There's no rationalizing any farther. If he's already pricked your heart, then please get out of your seat. One of these fine ushers will meet you and they'll pray with you. Is there one who says, I need to surrender? I need this Christ in my life. Just come, come, come. Maybe, maybe you've been away from God. Maybe, maybe the devil's been speaking in your ear and he's been trying to trick you. You're not alone. He does it to everybody. Everybody. So if he's tried to trick you up, just come. Make a fresh dedication to him. Say, God, here I am. I'm not going to do like Eve. I'm not going to listen to the devil no more. What's he do? He tries to isolate us from the things of God, from the house of God, from leadership. Why? That's what he does. So don't let him trick you no more. The altar's open. The altar's open. Is there one? Come, come. People are coming. Just come. God's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Not the pride of Satan. He, he works through pride. I, I'm not going. I don't want no one to see me. No, defy the pride and get up anyway. And come to him. Defy the spirit of pride. I'm not going. I'm not going. Yes, get up and come to him. If that's you. It's no shame. He's tricked you. He's tricked Eve. He's tricked thousands, millions. But today the light has been shined on him. He's not tricking me no more. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come, worship team. Come on, let's praise him. Let's gather around. Let's love him. Let's enjoy the gift of Christmas. Come on, just make yourself acquainted with him again.
the weak and made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is the Lord, He's the Lord of all. Just come, press your way in. Christ alone. New life is coming to some new life. Lord. 
raise our hands and just thank him for this beautiful presence we feel right now the presence of Christ himself changes everything hallelujah he turns mourning into joy hallelujah he turns sorrow into joy he turns takes our sins away and causes us to be free hallelujah praise the Lord he gives us beauty for ashes hallelujah praise God the wondrous exchange when Christ comes into your heart. Amen. How many, how many feel better than when you came in? Amen. How many are going to keep what you got this morning? How, like Pastor said, there's going to be times of trouble. There's going to be times of sorrow. But don't let that overcome what Christ has done. Because he came to comfort us and to strengthen us. And to, so that others who need you can get help too. Amen. It's not all about us, is it? Hallelujah. So turn to your neighbor right now. Just wish them love and give them a good handshake. Don't leave yet. Got a special announcement before you go. Everybody just hold tight for a minute. Have a special announcement. Amen. We know that um, you're going to be helping to just kind of help the cleaners. But for those of you that normally hit the gift center tonight, it will not be open. The last time before Christmas it will be open will be right now. So if you need any last-minute stuff, just head right over to the gift center, okay? God bless you, and have a wonderful day. And remember the families tonight in prayer. Come back and support. Hold on. Shh. Everybody's got to be quiet. <laughs>